Welcome to Brass Birmingham Beginner Strategy. You're not familiar with the rules. Brass 101 is down the corridor. Uh, yeah, just uh, click the link in the corner. Keep going, that's it. Uh, oh, honestly, these freshers, they're so green. So you will know that Brass is all about making the most out of your actions. Players all get the same number of actions and it's up to you to make the best use out of them and score the most points. An action that scores you zero points is taking out a loan. So you wanna be spending as few actions as possible taking out loans. And so how do you avoid having to take out lots of loans? Well, you need to get up the income track. But what you really want to do is take out your loans first at the start of the game and then get up the income track. This is because when you take out a loan, you go down the income track three intervals. But those intervals are smaller uh, whenever you have low income, like at the start of the game. So you want to take out your loans at the start of the game, even if it pushes you into the negative. You don't want to stay negative for long. You then want to get a building flipped as quickly as possible so that you can get out of the negative income. Now here's a tip. Uh, building a steam engine is a good way to do this because there's often a demand for iron at the start of the game and I'm going to show you why that is in a minute. Another waste of an action is building a canal that doesn't score a lot of points. Building that one canal just cost you a whole action. Better to use other players' canals. This is why the location cards are so important. Whenever you use an industry card, you have to build in your own network. But if you're using a location card, then you can build in someone else's network. Let's say I want to build a cotton mill. Uh, the location is going to need to have access to coal for me to build this. Uh, but is there a location that another player has linked to coal? And maybe they've even linked it to uh, the cotton market for me. And also a beer would be nice. So if there is a location like that, I want that card so bad. For this reason, it can be nice to uh, wait and let the other players build up their networks. You could, at the start of the game, just spin your wheels for a bit, taking some develop actions. You do want to get rid of those level one buildings, especially the um, big point scoring ones like the cotton mills. The develop action costs iron, and that's why uh, at the start of the game, there's often a demand for iron. Let's talk about your first couple of turns. Uh, in brass, in the first round, players only get one action instead of two. And iron is cheap at the start of the game. So if I am start player, I am likely going to develop. If I am not start player, then by the time it gets round to me, the iron might be quite expensive now, but that means there's going to be demand for iron. So then I'm likely going to take a loan and then build a steam engine, just like I said earlier in the video. Each round turn order is determined by how much money the player spent. The player who spent the least amount of money this round, they're going to go first next round. So in the example I just gave, if I um, used my first action to build a canal, then that would mean I would get to go first the next round. And then what I would do would be I would um, take out a loan and then build a steam engine and immediately get out of negative income, get some money in my pocket from selling the iron, and also be 30 pounds better off from the loan. This would be like a great way to start the game. But if someone, for example, takes out a loan first turn and spends no money, then uh, you're gonna wanna rethink building that canal because uh, you don't want to build a canal only for somebody else to use it. 
Finally, I want to draw your attention to the pottery. The level one pottery is worth a lot of points and a decent amount of income. So if you see a, lot, a pottery location that is nearby the pottery market, then you're going to want to consider that. Now, why does the pottery get to stick around into the railway era? Well, I recently taught this game to an Industrial Revolutions podcaster, Dave Broker, and I asked him that question. The potters, you know, continued on throughout the 19th century and, you know, at Etruria in particular, the um, Wedgwood works at um, uh, Stoke-on-Trenton. Um, that factory was still operating well into the 20th century. I think they, I think they finally like laid off their workers in the 40s or 50s or something. You know, so it, it was, it was around for about 200 years. Uh, pretty remarkable. Yeah. Uh, and now it's a museum, so you can go check it out. Well played. As a beginner player, you know you really um, you grasp the rules and everything really quickly, and you were able to process. You were quite absorbed in the game, I think. Yeah. Well, yeah, it was a fun game. Um, it <laughs> there is a lot to keep in mind at all times. Um, no, like it was it was a lot of fun and. Uh, after a while, yeah, I got the hang of it and to the point where I was starting to get a better sense of strategy too by the end. You can find a full interview with Dave on the channel where he reveals like some fascinating history about the game Brass Birmingham. Do consider supporting the channel with a thumbs up or a subscribe. Thank you for all of the encouragement I've had to keep making these videos. I'll see you in the next one.